morning, everybody. So, as Patrick said, uh, I, I'm trying to talk about uh, aspirant classicism, which is a very complex notion. In fact, uh, if you look at the literature on aspirant, it is today vast and rich. And you see here some uh, monographical publication about uh, the totality of his work. Uh, and please note uh, that uh, one of the first contribution after the famous uh, Gunnar Asplund book edited uh, uh, some years uh, after his death, there is an Italian book by uh, Bruno Zevi, the famous uh, Italian uh, critic in architecture, which is a good book, uh, but quite funny because in this book, uh, the Villa Zunerma doesn't exist. It is just quoted in the final list uh, of the works, uh, and it is due to the fact that the uh, baby hated the classicism. <laughs> and he was uh, uh, fascinated, on the other hand, uh, by the Woodland Chapel, because it, it was supposed to be much more vernacular than classic. And then, uh, you have uh, other more general publication about Asplund, about the Nordic classicism uh, or Swedish grace. And I want to mention also a fantastic essay by Elias Cornell, which is about uh, the particular special vision uh, of uh, Asplund. And uh, later on, uh, we have a publication uh, devoted to specific projects, the cemetery, the, the, the exhibition, uh, and uh, the Gothenburg Law Court. If we look uh, at these three main uh, contributions, we can see that uh, Romanticism and Classicism are very often uh, uh, taken in consideration together. So the idea according, that, according which <coughs> classicism and romanticism are opposite uh, attitude is not valuable when we deal with uh, Asplund's architecture. And the third one uh, uh, is, in my opinion, the best contribution because uh, Peter Blondel Jones decided that not to organize uh, uh, his work according to a chronological development, but he tries to understand the specific themes. And it is exactly what I have tried to do with, with my booklet on Asplund, uh, where I insist on the fact that the main quality of uh, his architecture is the appropriateness, because uh, beyond the theme, beyond the subject, every time uh, Asplund's buildings and projects are very uh, pertinent uh, to the program and to the site. And it is uh, valuable for very different uh, projects or buildings uh, beyond uh, their chronological state. And in fact, uh, I have identified uh, some uh, thematical categories, landscape, uh, houses, monuments, uh, city, and also festive architecture. And you can see here that uh, some uh, projects could be pl easily placed in one or in uh, another category. So if we start with uh, a very famous, an iconic project about Asplund's experience, but also for Swedish grace, uh, the Villa Snellman, we can also understand that there is another very important element characterizing his work, is the fact that uh, uh, the architectural object uh, is never alone. I mean, uh, the nature, the form, uh, and the very character of uh, every single building by him uh, is to be understood uh, in relationship with uh, a wider context. In this case, uh, the perimeter of the, of the property and uh, the, the path one has to do in order to get the entrance of the house. And you see here in, two, in these two sketches 
how I could put word about uh, the configuration of this uh, approach to the villa itself. The villa is uh, part uh, of a publication uh, of architecture uh, published in 1990 when Asplund was uh, the chief editor, the director of the, of the magazine, uh, and uh, he published the Villa Serma together with, with the, the Axner Villa by Leverence Stuvelius and uh, together with uh, the, the Karl Els Atelier. I consider this uh, issue of the, of the review like a, a kind, if you want, of a silent manifesto of the new Swedish architecture. Please note the fact that uh, the three buildings are wooden buildings, uh, quite uh, small, uh, but strong enough in order <coughs> to define uh, the lines uh, of this new architecture, which was, uh, in a way, a reaction to the heavy presence of national romantic buildings. If we look at uh, Villa Snema, I don't want to talk about it because it is very well known, uh, but uh, I, I wonder where some elements of the villa come from. And uh, for instance, it is a uh, very famous entrance platform with uh, the two doors. Uh, they are coming quite uh, directly from uh, uh, an unbuilt uh, project uh, for a worker's house uh, in Yekaterino Slav, uh, never executed. But I want to underline the fact that uh, for Asplund, uh, there is no difference uh, concerning uh, the social class for which he was working. I mean, uh, that uh, an element uh, which is good uh, for uh, a worker house uh, can be used uh, with no difficulties uh, for uh, uh, an elegant uh, villa like uh, Snellman Villa is. And coming back to the fact that uh, his buildings are never uh, object in themselves, uh, I want to, to draw your attention on the fact that uh, the very famous Woodland Chapel that we had the chance to visit yesterday is uh, a, a marvelous building. But uh, please pay attention to the publication, because when Asplund published it for the first time, it insisted on the fact that uh, the chapel is only the main object, the protagonist, uh, of uh, a wider project, which is in fact the definition of uh, a piece of nature within the, the, the wild nature of the pine forest. And it is very important to understand uh, how this uh, chapel uh, plays uh, with uh, the other smaller objects composing uh, this uh, <coughs> ensemble. This is a mythical uh, building, uh, and uh, we know that Asplund <coughs> was already obsessed by this uh, geometry conflict between uh, rectangular or square forms and circular forms, uh, and this building could be considered a monument. So uh, its relationship with the site are not so strong like uh, in the Woodman Chapel or Nerman Villa, and it is a difficult attitude of him uh, to concentrate the, 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 the complexity in the interior of the building when uh, he had not the possibility to expand the meaning uh, of the building outside. This is a model realized by the model shop of uh, my, my school, uh, which is really fantastic. Uh, and uh, it describes, uh, uh, the, it is possible to open the model, the interior space, which is really uh, fantastic and naturally very close to the theme he will develop uh, when uh, confronted with the uh, library. So now, today, thanks to Nina, we know the library very well. Uh, and you know that uh, at that time, uh, 
the Bildek was uh, very hardly criticized by younger colleagues uh, of Asplund because uh, it was considered uh, a <coughs> classical, too classical, too formal music. In real, I think that uh, if we look at this photograph, we have already seen it, uh, thanks to Nina, we understand that, that uh, Asplund classicism had nothing to do with academic approach. It was based uh, on the very idea of uh, dismantle and deconstruct the classical order. And this vision is really fantastic, and it is really possible to understand and to read how this uh, combination of volumes uh, was uh, conceived. So there is no question about uh, the progression from uh, romanticism to classicism and then to modernism, because uh, I think that in Asplund's architecture there is uh, a, a, a straight uh, vision of architecture and uh, a constant uh, way for, uh, I mean, uh, thematizing it. Another wonderful project, which is not uh, very well known. Uh, we have to thank uh, Stuart Brede because in his book uh, there is an axonometric view of the project which allows us to understand uh, the complexity of this building and its relationships with the city. I have to confess, uh, you know, that uh, Colin Rose and Fred Cotter recognized the importance of this uh, project, uh, and we can discuss about uh, this proposed confrontation between the plan voisin and uh, the project itself. Uh, uh, but uh, Asplund was able to produce a very modern, I mean, a very efficient building in relationship with the program, uh, and also so rich concerning the relationship with uh, the city fabric, uh, and also the consciousness of the fact that it was a very important institutional building, but uh, not close to uh, Stockholm, uh, so you see here uh, a famous uh, plan of this project, design according the so-called Nolly uh, pattern representation. And I propose here an impossible confrontation between uh, the Royal Chancellery competition entry and uh, 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 a project for temporary dwellings uh, for workers in uh, Stockholm. It is not possible to establish a confrontation, but I think that the same uh, attitude that we have seen when Ashton takes uh, an element of a worker house and uh, transfer it to Villa Snellman is the same uh, that uh, it acts here. And uh, the organization, the volumetric organization of uh, this worker uh, dwelling, it's fundamentally, from the point of view of the, of the volumetric morphology, fundamentally the same that we find in the Royal Chancellery competition. And uh, mm -hmm. you probably know this wonderful uh, perspective uh, view of this uh, project. Uh, uh, we know a certain amount uh, of uh, photos uh, of the time, uh, and uh, this uh, project, uh, which was actually realized, uh, was uh, systematically considered not so important. And Afon Albert, Albert, who is the author of the introductory essay uh, about Asplund in the first uh, monograph uh, contribution, uh, he criticizes quite hardly this project, which is too theatrical, too individual, and uh, formalistic. And listening to Nina, I agree, eh? the word theatrical is not a forbidden word in architecture. And first of all, when we deal with Asplund architecture. Let's try to understand what was uh, the cultural context uh, when Asplund designed uh, this uh, uh, very brilliant uh, project. Uh, you can see
see on the left side uh, a couple of uh, uh, photographs by Gustav Kronquist, uh, which documented uh, in, a, in a very deep uh, way the state of the city in the 20s and 30s, and then uh, a couple of uh, sketch, sketches drawing by Ferdinand Bulber, uh, devoted to the rediscovery of uh, vernacular uh, Swedish uh, architecture. And here you can see the model, which was once again realized by the model shop uh, in our school, uh, which gives us, uh, for the first time, uh, a, a complete vision of the volumetric composition of this uh, drop. It is a uh, one to 200 model, so uh, quite well defined. Uh, and all the elements are clearly uh, visible. You probably know that uh, there was a campaign concerning uh, the construction of the temporary or emergency houses in Stockholm, uh, and many architects got the commission to design uh, intervention of this kind. Uh, so you, you see here a couple of examples. Uh, and uh, you can find uh, in the Art Des Archive also drawings like this uh, within uh, the file uh, concerning uh, statire of Tumstoken project. And I think uh, that it is a mistake. I don't want to be polemic, but I think that this kind of project has uh, nothing to do here. One year after the, the construction of, the, of this uh, project, uh, Asplund uh, publishes it uh, with a couple of pages in the catalog uh, uh, of the exhibition organizing the medieval art, uh, art gallery devoted to housing. And uh, the first uh, line uh, is about uh, the duration of the construction. The construction began June 1917, and the 1st October people were entering uh, in the building. And it is absolutely fantastic. But usually historians don't take care about this aspect, but it was really a fantastic operation. As uh, usual, the rest of the description is very technical because finally, you know that Asplund never talks about the things we are interested in. So <laughs> he systematically insists on technical aspects, uh, and it is a way for affirming that uh, architecture is, first of all, the answer to technical physical problem. Here you see the construction of the southern part uh, of, uh, of, the, of the site. Uh, and uh, you can observe uh, in the bottom plans uh, that uh, the layout doesn't respect uh, the urban grid. The urban grid uh, which were not yet existing, but uh, there is uh, the there was a famous uh, Linval uh, uh, plan uh, who <coughs> established precise uh, lines. So maybe Asplund uh, was nostalgic, uh, but the year before he gave a lecture uh, that was later published as uh, an essay against the way how the urbanization of the southern part of Stockholm uh, was uh, done. So it was, uh, uh, for him, uh, the opportunity to show that it was uh, possible to build uh, a modern uh, project uh, respecting uh, the very characteristic morphology of uh, the city of Stockholm. And uh, I, I'm, uh, I'm thinking of uh, of the emerging rocks which are still present in the city today. So you see in the, in the upper uh, picture that uh, this building is organized according completely different principles rather than uh, the orthogonal grid uh, of, uh, of the urban 
urban development plan. Some uh, very simple typological uh, principle. You see that uh, there is uh, mainly two types. Uh, the first one uh, is uh, mono-oriented, and the second one uh, uh, is organized according to, to, to better across ventilation. And uh, naturally, these two types with different variation are organized in order to get the best solar uh, sun uh, uh, lighting condition. And you see that uh, the, the depth of the building is always the same. Uh, doesn't matter if it is oriented north-south or east-west. Uh, and here we have uh, 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 at first uh, official uh, set of drawings, uh, please note of the date, uh, May 17, not 7, 1917, uh, and uh, I have indicated using different colors the position of these two sites. And uh, here, uh, the frontal photograph of uh, uh, the main uh, place target uh, uh, of this uh, small city-like project. Here uh, it is a typological composition. Uh, the drawing was executed by Ah, okay. Marcello, thanks. And uh, naturally, together at the same point, uh, May 7th, there is a, a set of drawings uh, uh, devoted to specific uh, types. Uh, and uh, they are very precise and rich. Every dimension is uh, carefully uh, explicitated. Uh, and uh, we have uh, the same uh, set of drawings without the measures, uh, but with the colors. Because if you have seen in the perspective view, one of the characteristic points is the fact that uh, these, uh, let's say, tessen of like uh, project was uh, colorful and uh, I would say much more joyful than uh, uh, some project by, by, by tessen. So here you see that uh, every single type uh, has uh, a specific uh, plate uh, in color. And about colors, uh, there is uh, in Art Bess uh, this uh, document uh, which is not in very good shape, uh, where Asplund uh, described the colors to be used uh, in order to paint every single building. And it is quite surprising because, uh, uh, naturally, you know better than me, that uh, the Falu Road, uh, the red color used, uh, also in, in rural uh, uh, buildings, uh, is not the only one. There is only uh, also yellow and green, and that's the reason why you would see at the end uh, some uh, color pictures. The uh, the project was uh, so joyful, and also in this uh, case uh, you can appreciate uh, <coughs> the chromatic uh, variation. And then uh, there is uh, another uh, layout uh, which is uh, quite the same, but uh, not exactly. And it was uh, uh, drawn uh, in June, so probably when uh, the building site had already begun. Here we can see that uh, the theatrical move may be inspired by uh, Camilo Cite theory is uh, visible, because there is no orthogonality, there is no parallelism, but uh, one had the possibility to get uh, the entireness of the project when entering uh, from the west uh, or from the north. And uh, this dilatation and compression of uh, spaces is also typical of uh, rural settlements uh, in Sweden. But we cannot forget the fact that at this time uh, there was full of neighborhood of this type uh, in the southern part of the city. And uh, the deformation of this elementary geometry is systematically produced by the presence of uh, rocks uh, or other elements, maybe a tree. And it is 
uh, another layout, uh, undated, uh, but for sure it was elaborated after the previous one, uh, because you see here, oh, I don't know. but uh, in the upper part, uh, left, uh, there is uh, a, a, an entry platform uh, which has been uh, uh, realized, uh, and uh, it, uh, ah, yes, you see it, uh, it uh, doesn't appear in the previous uh, layout. Here, you see another important thing, because uh, the red line indicates uh, the layout uh, that you have seen in the previous image, uh, but now apparently the perimeter of the, of the project has been modified. So the, the, the place, uh, the piazza, is <coughs> apparently larger, and uh, I have to confess, it is quite impossible to understand what was really built according to the dimension illustrated in this uh, site, uh, in, in this layout. And also it's difficult to understand uh, how the service buildings were distributed. And also if we look uh, carefully to the photographs, it's difficult to understand. And I have the impression that uh, the project was never realized exactly like it is illustrated in the layout. But the, the, the main uh, meaning of this is the fact that uh, uh, Nina mentioned it. Uh, this was <coughs> a work in progress. And I am sure that Asplum has several times modified uh, the general layout uh, in order to follow his principle to be respectful uh, of, the, of the topography. And here you see a, a set of uh, section, cross section, uh, I mean crossing the, the, the main street conducing to the, to, the, to the piazza. On the left side you see a platform. He had the intention to use uh, the not to use material uh, for the for the building for building uh, for having a, a, a panoramic platform on the top of this small hill which doesn't exist anymore and here you can see a work in drawing uh, witnessing uh, the very careful approach that characterizes Ashland even in this uh, very modest and poor project. And it is about uh, this uh, platform uh, entrance uh, that you see here in this uh, photo and also in this one. For the rest, uh, you can uh, have uh, a look to the Stative at the Doomstalken file in our desk and you will find uh, quite a lot of uh, beautiful photographs uh, here, the illustration through photos and through a drawing uh, realized by him, uh, explaining how the uh, concrete basement is used in order to integrate the emerging rocks uh, and also in order to protect uh, the wooden construction uh, from uh, humidity. Other buildings, other uh, photographs, uh, and here the interior spaces, uh, service spaces, and I have not the time today to go deeper in the geometry of this fantastic pentagonal laundry, which organizes also uh, uh, a modification of the general uh, geometry. And then uh, these temporary dwellings uh, were still there uh, 50 years <coughs> after their uh, construction, almost 50. And the site was quite abandoned, and you, see, and you, you can see it. Uh, and uh, in uh, uh, 1964, there was a publication, once again, uh, by uh, the magazine Architecture, concerning the project uh, elaborated by 
Jerk, Alton, and Gust Erickson in order to transform the dwelling, making them adapted to contemporary life. And uh, by chance, uh, the remaining uh, buildings were destroyed by a fire some days after the presentation of this uh, project. And uh, in the very touching text accompanying uh, this uh, project by the two architects, uh, they mentioned the fact that uh, one Catea uh, professor used to bring their students visiting this uh, project uh, as, a, as a very good starting point uh, for approaching housing. Here we can see uh, one of the very rare color pictures showing uh, the north-south buildings. And here 